Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take amazing photo road trips. So you can be in the best position to get the best photos and how you can make your time and money go further. I didn't really grow up taking road trips. In Texas, a long drive for most people is usually just between the big cities on the interstate, really boring. I started taking photo road trips in 2014 just to see more of the surroundings, get inspiration and, you know, see this part of the world. And I was, very bad at it. I never really had a plan. I left too late in the morning. It would make, I hate to say this, meaningless photo stops throughout the day. I'd be like, whoa, look at all these old signs. Look at this hand lettering. I need to stop and photograph every single one of them. But it was 2 p.m., the light was terrible, and I was wasting time that I could have spent getting to my actual destination. I was just winging it. I had a loose sense of where I wanted to go, but no sense of how to actually manage my time. And then at the end of the day, when I decided that I had covered enough ground, at the last minute, I would either overpay for a chain motel or stay in a completely disgusting one because I didn't look at any reviews online. And usually on the last day of the trip, I'd leave way too late in the morning and have to do 750 miles on the interstate because I needed to get home that night. I always had fun, I made memories. I think I got some pretty good photos out of it, but it was stressful, it was expensive, and it was completely inefficient. One would think that I would learn from these mistakes, but no one ever showed me a better way, so I ended up repeating these mistakes over and over and over. And then I met Daniel Sloan. Daniel and I have been on some huge road trips together and he never makes these mistakes. He has changed the way that I approach any long distance drive. Hi, I'm Daniel Sloan and long distance road trips have always been a huge part of my life for as long as I can remember. The most recent trip was to get his BMW 7 Series from Austin to his home in Portland. Honestly, the, the first step to figuring out where I might want to go is just looking at the basic Google Maps suggested route and starting from there. So that gives me immediately an idea of the shortest possible drive. And depending on the time of year and the weather and the car I'm in, I also determine how many hours a day I'm willing to drive. Once I see the, the basic route that Google Maps recommends, I start zooming into the map a little bit and seeing which places might be in day one, which places might fall into day two, day three, day four, and so on. I try to find routes that aren't solely on the interstate. Driving on the interstate for several hours straight is usually not very interesting. You might go through a couple interesting small towns, but the driving itself isn't necessarily going to be very engaging, and you end up missing a lot of things that you might see if you took a state highway or county highway. In terms of creating a sustainable road trip, and what I mean by that is creating a road trip that allows you to get enough sleep each night, allows you to have a balance of the number of things you see each day. It's important to create a work back schedule. Start with where you are trying to get to and set up Google Maps to drive in the other direction. By doing that, you can see which towns are approximately eight or nine hours away, um, you know, again, depending on how much ground you want to cover in a day. So if you have a four day trip, that means you have three overnight stays on the road. And by working backwards like that, you can start to understand what your options are for an actual feasible route across the country. One thing that I'm always pleasantly surprised by is by using the feature in Google Maps to drag the suggested route line around and add different points, you can very quickly and easily see what the estimated time is when you make changes. So by dragging the route off of the interstate, you might think that you'd be losing quite a bit of time by doing that, but it might only add 20 or 30 minutes to your drive and allow you to see a few small towns or maybe some 
natural feature that's really interesting and beautiful that you might not otherwise be able to see. On our last trip, we did almost 2,400 miles in four days. So that's almost 600 miles per day. It's important to make sure that the amount of miles you're hoping to cover in a day is actually realistic with all of the stops that you want to make and what time of year it is. Because if you want to drive 700 miles in a day, you're not going to be able to stop and relax anywhere. You might be able to hit a photo spot or two, but you're going to be in a hurry because you're trying to make it to your destination. If you have a, a limited number of days for your overall drive, which is usually the case, there may be segments of the drive that are more important to you to see or spend time in as opposed to others. Maybe the, the segment closest to home is the one you're most used to, so you want to skip over those or save them for a different trip. So consider driving maybe a few extra hours the first day of your trip to cover a little extra ground, which means the next two, three, four days, you don't have to drive as many miles each day, and that allows you to take more breaks, see interesting things, take photos in places that you didn't expect to stop at in the first place. I think my, my favorite way to plan now is not necessarily booking the lodging for every stop before the trip. Because sometimes plans can change. You might decide to take a different route. Maybe the weather has other ideas for the route you had planned. So while you can wait until the, the day of to book a motel, try to plan one day ahead over your lunch or your beer the day before take out your phone or your laptop and start playing with Google Maps, projecting where, where you can get to realistically, and then look at the lodging options there. I will check Google Maps lodging results in the town that I want to stay in, and I immediately filter out any motels with lower than four stars of reviews. Not four-star hotel rating, because that's luxurious, but the actual reviews need to have a four star or better average. That means almost in all situations, you're going to get a clean, somewhat comfortable motel or hotel. And when you're just needing a place to crash and take a shower, that's really all you need. Basically, any time between November and into well into March, there's a chance that you could encounter snow, especially at higher elevations. Each state has its own website for road conditions on the highway, and it's important to check these the night before and the morning of your trip because conditions can change very quickly and you don't want to be caught off guard when you're driving over a mountain pass that was supposed to be clear yesterday but today now has a snowstorm and spots of ice or something like that. Just remember that even if you're checking weather in each town along the way, the roads that go between the towns could traverse a mountain pass that is four or 5,000 feet higher than the towns on either side of it. And the conditions over that pass could be drastically different from the conditions in either town. Even though it can be difficult to get up before the sunrise and start driving, there are some really spectacular minutes just before the sun rises, where the sky explodes into a million colors you've never seen before. The mountains or whatever the surroundings are, are glowing or starting to glow with, with the sun starting to crest the horizon. There's no better light to shoot in 
than those few minutes just before the sunrise or at the very, very end of the day, just as the sun is setting. There's a particular place where you do want to shoot. Consider planning your trip so that you're arriving there very late in the day so you can shoot in that golden hour toward the end of the day or stay there at night so you can get up early in the morning and shoot in the, the morning glow uh, before sunrise and just after sunrise. The midday hours aren't always the best time for photos, especially if you're into dramatic contrasts like Kevin. <laughs> Um, so you use the midday to cover the ground and that way you have more flexibility toward the beginning and end of the day to, for those unplanned stops or planned stops to take photos and spend time outside of the car. You can have a plan, but what makes a trip special might be outside the plan. The most memorable things aren't necessarily going to be the tourist photo of the Grand Canyon. They're going to be these moments, the impromptu stops, where everything just fell together perfectly. These are the moments. These could be the best moments of the trip. These are what's worth capturing. And that's why I keep going on all these long drives. Be realistic. Plan for the unplanned. Allow for moments of spontaneity. And don't try to fit too much in. I've been doing this for a while, and that's how I plan a trip. And what inspires me to keep capturing the machine. Boom. Bow.